Uh, good morning. It's Saturday the 21st, yeah, and it's uh, going on 8 o'clock. I'm just getting out to the garage. I did some computer work this morning and ordered some parts, spark plug wires, spark plug ends, stuff I stock that was getting low on quantity. So I ordered that and a few other parts. Um, let's see, today, uh, Kevin's on his way over. He's uh, run out of work at his, run out of parts at his shop. So he's working on that Beezer that we worked on yesterday, but now he's waiting on parts. Uh, so he's coming by. Uh, I think we'll hang the new, new turn signal stalks and run the extra ground wire into each uh, turn signal so we don't have to worry about frame ground. And uh, then spin the bike around. We're going to turn the bike around and uh, rearrange the front end forks, swap the forks so that um, put the caliper on the left side where it belongs. In the meantime, while we're doing that, I'm going to pull the headlight off and the dash unit off this instrument, the dash unit. And um, there's, there are two wires hanging down loose underneath. Let's see if I can show them to you. Right, get my hand in there. Yeah, right in here. Got to figure out what they do for a living, where they're supposed to be connected, and then find out which wire comes up here to this neutral light. And um, finish that connection. I, I extended the wires coming off the tranny. These are the, no, these go to the neutral switch now. And uh, one will go to ignition voltage, and one will go to probably one of these wires, which will go up to that neutral light up there. Uh, we are completely hooked up, power, power on everything, waiting for the new assimilator. And um, that's where we are. We're going to have an interesting day swapping the front end, and I'm going to do play with some... Oh, I know, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take off both of these switch clusters and try to figure out, you know, if they can be cleaned and resurrected because they're really bad. They're, they're really, really bad. So, clean those up. So the switches, the dash panel, all that comes off. I have a new decal for the dash panel coming. So that'll look nice. And um, that's where we are. Progress is being made. And uh, I'll let you know how it goes. All right, Kevin's got the front wheel off. We're going to look for a few parts down there. And I've got the uh, switches off I'm over here on the bench. I'm going to start uh, cleaning and disassembling and taking a look at them and see what I see. Got the master cylinders here. We might, I think I have a rebuild kit somewhere here in the shop. It just, just, I just think there is. So uh, I think we'll take this apart and take a look inside it. Okay, so we're going to put these, we're going to swap these lower legs for sure. Maybe we'll just drop out the whole two legs from the top and replace them. We wanted to see what the oil looked like, and frankly, it's not that bad. I mean, I've seen it come out of there black, so I'm not too worried about that. This bike doesn't have that many miles on it. So we're going to drain the oil as we're doing, and um, I think we're going to drop the tubes out and see if we have a set of these over on the wall in my leftover spares and put these on, okay? If we don't, then we'll put it back together temporarily and order these because they're kind of cracked and nasty. All right. But we'll put fresh oil in it for sure. All right, so we've got the, um, the right-hand uh, fork leg out. It's sitting over there. And uh, getting ready to take this left-hand fork leg out. And I thought I'd show you uh, a couple of tricks. First of all, this uh, wedge that I've got here to spread the fork. Lower triple three. Yeah, lower triple three here. It's just an old screwdriver that I cut off and I pound that up in here to spread this just a little bit. Okay. Up here, this is a tool that I made years and years and years ago before I realized that you could buy this tool. And I've made one for just about every bike I work on. This is an old uh, fork nut that I ground off and had threaded rod welded to it. And I use that for pulling the, the tubes up into the, the top fork, top and bottom fork. Okay, so this is the tool that's actually used to pull them up 
Right now, we're going to tap on it here just to break it free and it'll fall out. Other than that, another, another deal is these uh, insides, the springs in here, and they screw into the fork cap. If you take a really old, worthless 9 16th wrench and grind it really, really thin, it will fit between the cap and the spring to hold it while you tighten down the uh, fork cap. I'll sh we'll, we'll show you that when we put it together. So right now, Kevin's going to tap on this fork. Oh, you're going to do the catch on yourself, huh? Yeah, let's see if I can. Just do it one hand. Yeah, all right, go for it. And it drops right out. And that way you don't damage the fork and get all, no chrome damage from twisting it back and forth. Now, you can take, take that out or just drop it all the way through. Yeah. Can you turn it? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. There you go. And now we have both fork legs off. We're going to take them over to the bench. And we have a brand new set of rubbers here, gaiters. Uh, I don't know why I have a set of brand new gaiters, but I do. So they're going to go on, and then we'll just put them back in reverse order. <laughs> so assemble, yeah. assemble yeah. in reverse order. But in this case, we're actually going to reverse the legs. All right, so all we're doing here is tightening the, the nut on the spring, inside spring I don't even know what to call it. It's things. Yeah. And uh, getting old. Hold this, tighten this. He's got the real thin 916, so I'm going to hold the leg up so he can work on it. Okay. Since this leg is really being very cooperative, you don't even need to pull it up. It's just good. Um, I can push it up while you. Right there. And then. Hang on. There it goes. Don't you know? I should have taken this off. Let's get that out of there. Nice LED bulb. Mm -hmm. And let's just take this off. Here's a pair of pliers. I'll do this. Oh, me... Regular pliers? Yeah, let's see if I can get it. Just easier if I take this cable. I should have stopped the video five minutes ago. Yeah, oh well. We'll be back. I'm yeah. going to take that cable off of that. Okay, so what we did is we pulled the pinch bolt, the, the, the wedge out of here and put a pinch, pinch bolt in it to hold this leg up. Okay, so now it's all the way up. We've already hooked up the shock absorber screw into the, into the top nut. And now we're just going to tighten down the top nut. And now I can put that cable back on that was vexing, <laughs> you know, it was vexing me so badly. We're, we're going to do the other side. We'll do it. Uh, we'll video that also. All right. So what we did is um, put the pinch bolt in here. Oops. I, I was just going to say <laughs> tight enough to keep it from falling down. All right. So, uh, a little tighter. Tighten that pinch bolt just a little bit. Okay, that'll hold it, but it's not firmly, fully tight. We're going to tighten those pinch bolts after we tighten the cap, cap bolts. Now, right now, Kevin has the two, he's doing it with a wrench this time, just to show and tell, and the thin 9 16 
tighten. Is this screwed on all the way? Uh, yeah. Hold that and hold that and tighten that. Now do it by hand. I, here, I'll do it. Just make sure you get lots of threads. Okay. All right. Now go ahead and tighten the uh, inner bolt and the outer bolt so you don't come apart. Okay. That's good. All right. Now we'll drop the leg down with the uh, instrument in place. Once I'm going to take the cable off this instrument too. We'll drop it. <laughs> we didn't. Huh. We, we should. We got to put this in here. Oops. In K. All right. Well, this is a. We'll do a take three. All right. Resuming where we left off, we have the instrument in, in place now, which is <laughs> you know, kind of cool. Kevin's getting ready to tighten up the locking nut. Here we go. That's it. And at this point, we can drop this lower leg down a little bit to catch the threads. Like that. And now we'll tighten it down and use it to use it to pull the leg up into place. Okay, yeah. It's there. Is it in all the way? Uh, well, it's yeah, it's hooked on something because I can't turn any farther. Okay, so it's caught here. These are notorious for stripping. Stripping. Okay. They're very fine threads. Yep. So we make sure that it's actually in the threads. And I think it is. Let's turn it gently with the. Let's turn it with the socket very gently. Snug. Uh -huh. Keep me. Keep okay, now at this point, don't tighten it yet. Loosen this pinch bolt, okay. and then we'll tighten this, just to take out any mm -hmm. bazillionth of an inch slack that might be. All right. Now tighten this one up here, just to pull it up that final bazillionth of an inch. That's good. Now tighten the pinch and we'll do this other side also. Same thing over here. Now we've already tightened that one down. Did you tighten it? To the nut. Uh, tighten this down, all right? It's, it's snug. It's snug. Yeah, snug. Yeah, snug. Okay, let's go. You can uh, lo so you loosen this. Loosen this, yeah, tighten, yeah, tighten that. that. Okay. okay. That's it. Well, good. Yeah. Then that's good, all right. So we have successfully swapped the um, front forks, putting the caliper on the left side where it belongs. Like so. Good. Now with the pinch bolts tight, I can still loosen these top nuts if I have to swing these instruments out of the way because I'm getting ready to take this whole dashboard off the bike and uh, take a look at the back side of it to find out what's happening. First, um, Kay, if you'll drop this headlight out, 
Mm -hmm. I'll go over, the, over there and start working on the switches again. Okay. At least unbolt it and drop it down. Right. And that'll give me access to the bottom of that well, dashboard. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. So I'm going to go back over here and see if I can clean up these switches. Okay, this conglomeration here is called a workbench. And in process on this workbench are two different projects. Over here, Kevin is learning the joys, the absolute joys of taking turn signals apart and soldering in a third or second wire, a ground wire, directly to the inside socket so that uh, we don't have to worry about frame ground. And he's enjoying himself so much there. What do you got, two done? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, they're, they're, soldering is my first love. Well, second love behind my wife. <laughs> he doesn't like the solder. <laughs> okay. So anyway, you know, you got two out of four. They're going faster. Oh, yeah, that's you know, right, they, yeah. They, they or the 27th one. We need more thin wire. Uh, I think it'll roll. Oh, no, it, that was too thick. It's slightly thinner. Um, then go through the basket of wires. Okay. Right over here, see what you can find. All right. Okay. Yep. I, yeah, go ahead. I, on the other hand, am over here working on switches. I've done three out of four. This is the fourth. I thought I'd show you uh, some of the fun parts. This is the, um, I don't even know what this is. The left turn, right turn switch. And more something. I'll show you that little bitty screws hold in this little plate here. This little plate snaps back and forth, which is hard to do by one hand. It moves this little slide right in here, up and down, and it has a little contact in here, right about there, that goes between these three contacts on this fiber board. Now if I take a pair of pliers, which I have actually modified just for this job, let's see if I can find this, okay? I use these to pull this board out, and then carefully take this little contact out, and then carefully take the spring that's inside here out. All of which like to go spring. So uh, I'm going to hold this down with a weight and see if I can uh, take that out as a show and tell. It's fun looking through the camera trying to decide what I'm doing. Okay, there's the fiber board, and there's the contacts. This is the push button switch. This is the horn horn switch. So these come out like that. Okay, these contacts get all grubby and nasty and dirty. And that's oxide on this one, so I have to clean that off. In the meantime, back at the ranch, here's the slide. And then the spring, both of which like to go spring. So we'll put those up there. All right, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this slide out. The spring and the slide, the spring and the contact go inside this slide. And that slide is slid by this thing, okay? So anyway, um, every time I do this, I say to myself, I'm never doing this again. I'm just gonna buy new. These things are expensive. So I'm pretty good at taking them apart and putting them back together. So I'm gonna clean up these contacts, clean up the slide, and put this back together. All right, I'm getting ready to put this switch back together. I've cleaned up the contacts on the end of the wire. They're nice, shiny bright now. This is the other contact. This is the little slider contact. I don't know if you can see that. Let me get, where's my hand? There it is. Let's see, can you, let's see if I get behind that. Will it focus down? Hello, focus. There, that's the slider contact, okay? So it goes on top of the little spring inside the little slidey thing, which goes in the little slidey hole. And all I have to do is put all those things together without the spring going spring. 
So I'm going to do that now, and if it, if it takes me six tries, you're going to get to watch six tries. That's the joy of me doing this and you watching this. Here we go. Spring goes in a little slidey thing. Mm -hmm. I'm still taping. And this, the contact goes on top sideways, like so. Let's put that aside. This contact goes in here like this, with the push button switch sticking through and the contact in the little slots. Now, I don't know if you can see that. So the board with the contacts is in there. How are we doing? You can sort of see it. Now, I have to put this slidey thing in here like that with the contact on the end of it all at once. So I'm gonna put this together So now it's a package deal. I'm going to take these long nose pliers that I modified years ago just for this job. It holds that little contact in and it lets me slide this down into that area there like that. Okay, now it's in place. Then this guy is the lever that turn that moves the little slidey thing sideways. Slidey thing, that's a technical term. Then I have these really neat Japanese screwdriver, Phillips style screwdrivers that are very, very sharp. Did you know that Phillips screwdrivers were designed to slip out of the head of the Phillips screws? They did that on purpose to keep people from stripping screws. So these are designed with sharper edges so they don't pop out of the little screws when you tighten things down. There. Okay, now switch goes center. Okay, and this switch is a left turn, right turn, and horn. Now what I'm going to do is check the check it electrically with meter. I'll get set up and I'll show you how to do how I do that. All right, I've got the wires connected. The horn button wires connected, connected to the meter. So let's just. Okay, we've got good action there. I think I need a new battery in my meter. Okay, so that tests good. All right, uh, testing the turn signal function. Okay, turn signal that way. Now we go over here to, that was green and red. We need green and, that's green and white over here to green and red. And we have good, good switch. Okay, so horn button works, turn signal switch works, and um, nothing's jammed up anymore. So we're gonna put this back on the bike. Well, it's about uh, 2.20. I've had some running around to do, done some shopping, picked up some brake fluid, did a few other odds and ends. So I've taken a couple hours out of the middle of the day. Uh, here are the new turn signals that Kevin modified, um, all brand new. And um, I want to show you what he did. He actually soldered a um, red wire, ground wire, to the case of the of each um, 
light socket. So these will then go directly to a red ground wire on the bike. So we don't have to worry about grounding the, tur the um, turn signals through this plastic, metalized plastic case. Uh, it works, but it's intermittent and just bad. So I'm gonna put these together and put them on the bike. I don't think I'll be wiring them today. It's kind of late, I'm a little tired. Um, over here on my part, here are the switches that have all been fixed and they're all operational and they've all been tested. And uh, I'm gonna put these back on the bike uh, probably tomorrow and hook them up. The uh, lower legs have been swapped headlights hanging before I do anything else with the front end. I'm going to take this off, these two bolts, so I can see up inside of it and find out you know, what do these two wires do for a living? What, what wire goes to the neutral? And a couple of other things. A little bit of curiosity. Um, I guess I'll put it back on. I could keep it off until I get the new dashboard, which would be really nice. And I have to test all four of these bulbs they do make replacement bulbs that are LEDs, and if any of these bulbs, if any of these lights don't work, I will uh, replace them with LEDs. Uh, there's no oil in the forks, we know that, we put, it, put them together. Uh, so I will pop those off and put the oil into the forks uh, sooner or later. So that's why they're marked. So anyway, that's where we are. Uh, it was a full day for the time we spent. We started about 8 o'clock or so, and uh, I'm going to say three hours to get all this done. So uh, I'll also I take a look inside this master cylinder and see if it works. And um, that's where today is. I think I'm done for the day. I'm very tired. Okay, we're done. All right, so uh, all four of them are put together. I'm not gonna mount them, I'm tired. But uh, let's just go through and do a quick test on each one of them. These are LED bulbs. So let's just do a quick battery test on each one of them and see how they go. Okay, so the all test good. I'm done for the day. Uh, see you tomorrow.